So in this video, I'm gonna break down a video from James from Invest Answers where he talks about a brand new metric and this is his age versus speed versus transactions per second versus finality. And he comes up with this max TPS over time to finality uh, rating. And if you have a look at some of the metrics here, Kadani's here, it says it's only got a theoretical max TPS of seven, uh, finality of five minutes. Okay, so we need to really have a look at this and get a better understanding of Cardano's transactions and what it actually means. Uh, and then we'll also have a look at the scaling side of things and how some of these new dApps are making this better, <laughs> so, so much better than it is. So let's have a look at this uh, video from James first. And now what I did was with the team, we created a new ratio. It's called max TPS over time to finality. I believe speed is important. Not, not just speed, but also finality is very important. So wouldn't it be cool if you had a ratio of dividing your theoretical max TPS divided by Okay, so speed for usability of the blockchain uh, makes it uh, better for the users to submit transactions, uh, fast trading, etc. Then the finality, so you can avoid situations of double spending, uh, that is forking the chain, uh, attacking the chain through like a 51% attack, uh, then forking it and then spending your assets over and over again. So that's, that's all theoretically possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that, that's why these metrics are really important. Uh, but also other metrics that are really important, security, security of your assets. It's no point of having fast transactions if your assets are going to be hacked and stolen. And also decentralization, so you don't have a single entity pulling the plug uh, turning off the blockchain, uh, resetting it, changing uh, what the transactions are uh, because uh, one person controls it, one company controls it. Uh, if you want that kind of experience, you can just go to a bank. And, you know, if you get money stolen from your account, the bank can just restore it. Um, you know, it's uh, you've got insurance from credit cards, for example. So uh, very important metrics also to look at other than just speed and finality by time to finality and you get a total score now what this highlights okay and again sorry about the confusion yesterday but this highlights that in the realm of layer one blockchains it, i think it is crucial for their survival to be fast and have fast finality and there is also a correlation between age speed and transactions per second and finality you can look at days since launch here in the middle of this chart how old some of these chains are and how the newer ones are much faster are the old ones going to survive no, they're not, unless they're going to change. Now, um, I think uh, with, with a lot of these chains, these new ones that have come out, they need that big uh, point of difference. Uh, what's better about them? Why should we be using this chain? So they centralize the chain itself so they can have this fast, uh, uh, fast theoretical max TPS. So when you, uh, you, you can, uh, I can't remember where this was, but it was a, a blockchain challenge and this uh, company in, um, a Chinese company came out and they did, uh, a, you know, a, a competition, like a hackathon, and they built a blockchain and they got some crazy, crazy speeds and won that competition uh, with what they set up. And it was like just a centralized blockchain. So it's it made it really fast. Uh, Ledger worked as it should, kind of like a large database, really. Um, and, you know, that's how some of these chains like Solana works. And the, there's a lot of trade-offs with that. So there's a lot of factors that you need to look into there. It's that simple. And I, I understand technology. I understand this. So if you're down here with a chain that's... Yeah, sure. You, you understand tech. Great. Cool. Um, uh, uh, you have to also remember that users don't understand all this. You're showing them numbers and red and green, and they immediately think red is bad. So this needs to be explained, and uh, especially the Cardano metrics here of that theoretical max TPS of seven needs to be explained. But let me just finish this bit of the video. It's say a thousand days old or more and uh it doesn't have finality and it doesn't have speed yeah and i know and i know the cardano people but we could pack a lot of a lot of transactions into every transaction i get that but you also have to look at adoption and yeah but look at adoption look other at all factors the other too. things yep and value transfer and dex volume and nft volume yeah, it's all happening. It's all coming. It's, it's, it's coming slowly, but, uh, you know, more people are discovering Cardano and realizing what's possible now. Uh, now, I have to say, when you're comparing transactions per second, he's saying that uh, Cardano transactions can have transactions in transactions. So when you send out one, 
when you create one transaction, you can actually send it out to hundreds of different wallets all at the same time. And that's really, really important to note because on account-based blockchains such as EVM, Ethereum, Solana, they can only send, one transaction can only send to one other address. So to be able to send to 100 people, you have to do 100 transactions. Cardano is so much more efficient uh, and more optimized with one transaction, you can send it to 100 people. You can send 100 different assets to 100 different addresses all in one transaction. So that one block, uh, you put in one transaction, but outputs 100 uh, results. So you really need to look at the Cardano's transactions that way. And I will pull up this website here. This is a brilliant website. It's eutxo.org. So this website here is really good in visually representing and breaking down and comparing all the transactions on Cardano and and giving them uh, and giving that TPS number so you can compare it to an EVM account based blockchain. So let me just pull up some of these. So this one here, the highest TPS to unique recipients. I'll open up that one so we can have a look at it. So here we can see in this block, this had a transaction speed of 74.75 transactions per second. So very different from the seven there that you can see, but let me explain how this actually works. So here we have the amount of uh, native Cardano transactions that went through and it was nine, but the total amount of transfers was 1,617. So out of those nine transactions, those nine inputs, it actually outputted to 1,617 addresses. So that's highly, highly optimized. You can't do that on EVM chains. If you wanted to send 1,617, let's say 1,600 uh, assets to different wallets, uh, all in one transaction, you can't do that. You have to do that in separate transactions and it will take time and it will cost you a lot of ETH or a lot of gas fees in general to actually do that. In Cardano, one transaction or here in nine transactions, could do that. The total fees for this, if you look in the bottom corner here, let me just uh, move this up so you can see it better. 5.33 ADA in total fees for this particular block to send that many assets out. So highly, highly efficient. Now, now if I actually change this over to per second as well, we get the uh, total amount of transfers per second. So this is 80 transactions per second. So all of this is possible right now with the size of Cardano's blocks, which are, is just 88 kilobytes and with the block time of 20 seconds. So all of that can be uh, increased. So the block sizes can be doubled. The uh, block time could be decreased to 10 seconds as opposed to 20 seconds and increase the theoretical max TPS for Cardano very, very easily. It's just a few parameter changes that need to be done. Now I'll just go back to the video here and I'll pull up one of the comments down here. And I thought this comment from uh, Mr. CZRC was really good in explaining this. And it was really good to see it in here. It didn't get many likes. Let me just like that there. So Cardano's current capacity sits around a thousand TPS. This is determined by block size and block production time. Theoretical max with adjustments. Uh, block size adjustments, increasing the block size could theoretically raise the TPS. Some estimates suggest reaching 3000 TPS with a larger block size around 180 uh, 80 kilobytes. However, this isn't confirmed and without um, potential drawbacks such as slow uh, block propagation. Hydra L2 solutions. Um, now that talks about L2 one. So Hydra is one that would possibly allow for trend, a thousand transactions per second per node. So it can scale up to millions of transactions per second, uh, but we haven't seen that in action yet. So again, very theoretical stuff. Now, uh, some important considerations. Here. So TPS alone isn't the whole picture. F focusing solely on TPS is misleading. Factors like decentralization, security, transaction fees also play a crucial role, especially when choosing a blockchain to use. The last thing you want is another big bull run like we saw on a uh, on uh, with Ethereum, with the NFT space going crazy and to send a NFT to a wallet sometimes cost more than the NFT itself. So the gas fees were astronomical at certain times. So uh, something really important to factor in when looking at a blockchain to start using, building on or whatever it is. Now the actual versus theoretical, remember these are theoretical maxes under specific condition 
conditions. The actual achievable TBS may vary on network usage, uh, transaction complexity, and other factors. So lots of things to look at there. So hopefully that has given you a better understanding of Cardano's TPS. Now, in terms of scaling, this uh, Twitter post here, I thought was really good in highlighting what can be done with some optimization. So uh, if you have a look at the blocks now, Cardano blocks are full. There are over 60 transactions in one of them. So 60 transactions a block, very good to see. Now here, what's gonna happen when AXO, a really popular decentralized exchange that's going to launch uh, in a couple of hours from now of recording this video, or it may be already launched by the time I get this video out. Uh, there is a huge amount of anticipation in using that DEX. And I know a lot of eyeballs are going to be on it. If you remember back in 2021, when Sunday Swap launched, lots of people came into the ecosystem and it caused a lot of network congestion. A lot of transactions were uh, being queued up because of that. But now if we look at AXO and their approach, um, it uses, AXO uses Plutus V2 with Plutarch, with the average transaction size will go from 12 14 kilobytes to one to two kilobytes, packing in so many more transactions per block. So you can imagine at the moment with the block size of being 88 kilobytes, you can pack 88 of these smart contract transactions from AXO into that one single block. That is absolutely fantastic, absolutely amazing. And that smart contract might actually also execute off uh, four or five, maybe 10, 15 other transactions within it as well. So, uh, Scalability is really, really cool in the Cardano ecosystem. It's all about optimizing the code, the scripts, the smart contracts at this point. Uh, we can increase the block size, we can uh, decrease the block times, but optimizing the code is where it's at at the moment. And this is absolutely amazing. Now to improve some legacy stuff on the chain at the moment, uh, Pi Lanningham here from Sunday Labs has put together a SIP proposal and has worked with some other Cardano community members including Smog, to give Plutus V1 scripts some backwards compatibility with reference inputs and reference scripts, decreasing the size of those V1 scripts down to something very small as well, hopefully one or two kilobytes, maybe four at the maximum. So we can optimize the blocks as they are and scale up Cardano without having to do anything else in, in terms of uh, increasing block sizes or uh, decreasing the block times. So lots of optimizations and scalability at the moment, lots of work being done in the ecosystem. And hopefully that gives you a better understanding and idea of TPS on Cardano. It's not seven, it's uh, more closer to that thousand point. And with this type of work being done in terms of optimization of scripts and smart contracts, it could go a lot higher. So I'm looking forward to the future Cardano and actually seeing what the uh, real transaction speed is at the moment with the current block size and block time it is. So if you learned something from this, consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click that notification bell. Hopefully you return and you learn a little bit more from my channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.